They're all contributors. Yeah. All contributors. Oh, and Sean finally remembered. Yeah, welcome to Risk Thursday. <laughs> and th Only this is our opportunity. To, there we go. This is our opportunity to make fun of Sean for forgetting to record again. Yes, that's all. So, but There's the thing. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you for remembering, actually. Thank um, you, Sean. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so did I. So, uh, so okay, we're, we're doing the keywords here on Risk. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, we're just kind of looking through to help uh, its built in search engine. Does it need to be a <coughs> quote contributor? I mean, for the bus factor, it seems to me that it's all contributors. And really, it's not. Re okay, I understand why you want for uh, these, but I would say contributors and maintainers for all three of these. I think that's fine as well. I mean, I think we're not really specifying the difference between contributors and maintainers but I think they're both keywords that could be associated with these things. Right. Um, that's actually like a, a side comment that I had, which I know we're not inventing new metrics right now, but maybe we are because we just stuck in scorecard. Um, yeah. But I, in the I, committer, <laughs> uh, in these, all of these measures are kind of getting at the core of the community. Like it's not elephant factor, but committers and bus factor. And lately I've been struggling with how to actually count the number of maintainers in a community. If there's no specific identification of them and say an owner's file or something like that, where I think looking at the number of contributors can sometimes be misleading when there are many of them and only one maintainer. Yeah. Um, I, actually, in I a way, find, yeah. In most projects that's actually not very hard. Uh, it, well, I, I guess a uh, step one, if there's only one person maintaining it, they're the maintainer. And that covers half around half the cases, more than half of all cases. And in general, if somebody was able to directly commit to the project, then therefore they are a main, uh, they are, um, you can estimate that they must be a maintainer because they're obviously not just somebody who's contributing to the side. And that's assuming you're using GitHub or GitLab or something like that. When you say committing, you mean like actually like merging code? Uh, right, merging into a main branch. Yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. When, yeah, I, I mean committing into the main of the project, not to the, uh, to say their own uh, fork or something. Yeah. So but basically if you have a commit bit, you are a uh, you are not just contributing. You are a committer or a maintainer, and I often use the two words uh, synonymously. Even though anyone can you know anyone can make a copy and commit to their local copy. So, mm -hmm. so I think maintainer is a clearer term. We could okay. also add the word committer yeah. to this collection. Contributors, con contributors, committers, maintainers, as a triumvirate of keywords like that and just for all of them and that way if they use and i wouldn't use the word contribute for contributors although i see you've uh, re-added that should we no you can you can remove it i mean I, it was just a thought in terms of like we're not talking about everyone we're talking about yeah i, I know because everyone uses different terms like the paternity folks like they talk about onion analysis which is basically yeah. that we're trying to identify the, the core of the thing um, I love right. looking at the I, top, I, I, the percentage think, that's doing the top 50% or more. I, I think the problem is that some people use the committers in, uh, and what they really mean is core committers. So if we just use committers in the keyword search, you can define it more generally. But I, I think the term is used loose, often enough loosely that uh, you're better off just doing the search for the keyword search, uh, accepting the more general term. Okay. Ooh, and committers has two T's, so let's right. Is that right? I guess maybe I should ask. It's, it does uh, appear to have two T's. All right. All righty. All right, and are there others that are green that we need to deal with right now? I think we've oh, dealt we've with got test the coverage, ones. don't we? I thought I did that one. Risk testing okay. coverage, CICD, CICD. Yeah, I didn't know if the CI slash CD sometimes slash. I risk. think, yeah, I think both make sense. These are people will type in both. Risk. Yeah, well, and they can okay. see it. The slash, I think, might confound the search, so I didn't want to just put 
put it put it in there with the slash because slashes just sometimes break things. Okay. And I was I was looking over on the GitHub API because I was like, well, there's definitely a commit a right access to a repo that would. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, fin finish your thought. I, well, I, I was curious because this, this is maybe a, a me problem or the, the products I work with problem, but you can only see that the access levels if you have org privileges, if there's administrative privileges of that org. So if you're looking for a third party org, you can actually see who has approval access within a project. So if you're doing it for a other project, then you it's harder to like say you're trying to assess the risk of a project. You can't actually see that, so then you're sort of left with approximations for just who's doing how much work. Um, but the other problem is that maybe I'm just coming out of KubeCon and Kubernetes problems. 82% um, of their open pull requests are emerged by a robot called CI robot. Yep. Um, okay. So you, to actually figure out who's approving things to be merged, you have to go through the comment field of the payload, which is incredibly messy. So yeah. it's wait, wait, difficult wait, wait, wait. for the average person to go in and figure out how many maintainers are there without looking at owner's files. But that's indicative by the project, not with general design wait, wait. principles. Are, are they using Git? In which case, um, it's likely that the merge is referring to another Git commit where the actual change is taking place and the bot is just doing a merge commit. If they're not using Git, then I don't know. It would depend I'm on not this. sure. I mostly was just like, looking at the event stream and that was not helpful without digging through the payload. Okay. So if, yeah, maybe if yeah, I had yeah. a better source of information, it would be better. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, th you, th there may be a better way to do what you're doing because it, there's, there's actually a number of work streams like that where you do, where some bot does a merge and it's actually bringing in two branches and depending on the tool you're using it may only show like the main line it won't show the other one that change is coming from so you basically have to turn on some options to show the full path there i have i have done more little code analyzing uh get da data from git so and other sem tools so uh <laughs> you can feel sorry for me later <laughs> Well, I think if I had more tools, maybe then my problem would go away. If it's also like part of me wants to see if I could solve it with the general base case, because most people aren't going to necessarily have access to all these different types of tools. If they just have a raw okay. event stream, is that enough to make this assessment? Well, raw event stream, where, I mean, where are you getting this raw event stream? Sorry, the Git, the GitHub event stream familiar with that API. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, okay. Um, I don't know all the data that, that is included within the Get Event GitHub event stream. But if nothing else, you can identify um well presuming it's you're getting the pull request the um the merge uh ID. Um you can, you can then ask GitHub, hey given this merge ID or just frankly I would just download the whole repo from Git GitHub and then use Git because Git actually can manage and display a whole lot of that stuff. You know, give me this, show me that. Um, it has a format string that'll let you do all sorts of nonsense if, uh, if you're going to go down that path and and dump it in a database if you want to. Most likely. Sorry, I derailed. Keep going. Okay, I'm already at row 57. Am I way? Have I sped ahead, everybody? No, I think other people have been here first, given the list of uh, okay. things I see. I, I propose adding rights, legal, and law to the license coverage for keywords. Mm -hmm. um, yay. Wait, wait, so what's a positive? Plus one? Plus one? Yeah, plus one's plus one words. <laughs> or just yeah. like an I, like what is it like in the broader context? I don't know why I'm blanking on the word. What do I say when I agree with you without saying I agree with you? Uh, so you, could say, you well, I, I agree is fine. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And I guess for the OSI approved licenses, I would say the same uh, rights legal law. By the way, if you if you were to interact with me, you'll know I actually don't like the phrase intellectual property, 
Um, not because it's a yeah. problem with, uh, among the lawyers. Lawyers understand it. The problem is everybody else knows that property is a physical object. And I just, it, it just is not worth that fight. Just don't use the word. Otherwise, people, you know, as I said, the, the lawyers know what they mean. They have a very specific meaning. It's just not what. <coughs> right. So it's, a digital object cannot be a property? Yes, it can be. In fact, in fact, well, here's the problem. From the point of view of lawyers, property is a synonym for the word rights. That's okay. They are synonyms. There is no difference, at least within the U.S. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with other jur jurisdictions. But within the U.S., if you say the word property, that's just another word for the word rights. That's all it means. Now, everybody else in the world, when you say property, you're thinking about real estate or physical property. <laughs> Okay, yes. exactly. And, and, and Vinod, you are exactly, well, you're the problem. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I, I'm being silly. But, 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 the, the, but the thing is, your response is, I think, exactly how most non-lawyers respond. There is an assumption with the word property that's a physical object. And that's just an implication in normal, non-specialized uh, use of the English language. And I just have found that it is trying to get people to become lawyers is not worth the fight. If you want to be a lawyer, there are some awesome law schools. Go there. <laughs> but when you're trying to communicate with the non-lawyers using a word that isn't the legal term, but is more what they think it means, is a lot simpler. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, and as I said, if you're a lawyer and using the word uh, the, in its legal terminology, awesome, carry forth. But just <laughs> uh, on the on the OSI approved, I don't know, uh, just word approved or acceptable is how it's going to be helpful. Just approve or just acceptable. All right. I added a couple more keywords on uh, SPDX. Uh, ooh, SPDX documents specifically. That's interesting. Okay, there is another format for S bombs, but I mean, if that's what you want to measure. Is this case sensitive? Sorry, I should have asked that up front. What is what case sensitive? My Are these case sensitive? My mm -hmm. assumption is whomever edits this will desensitize. We'll fix that. Yeah. Okay, so in which case S, S bomb is already in there, so I'm gonna remove that. S bomb is where? Was already uh, in here. It's, it just it's was, like it was tinier. Very, it's very tiny. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind though, I want to capitalize the S bomb there because it's an abbreviation. Yeah. Even I, I'm going yeah. to assume that the keyword matching is case insensitive, but it that be, we ought yeah. to use the if it's an acronym, then we ought to use the acronym form. Sure. Yeah, that hopefully, I mean, I would expect the search is not sensitive to case either. I would hope not. <laughs> I would, uh, if we go to line 58, OSI approved licenses. Yep, I'm there. Uh, I would propose deleting just word approved and just word acceptable. Sure, I'm fine what with that. What do you? Where, where is this? What line? I have the words approved and acceptable that I suggested. Where, where are we talking? What line? Right here. 58. 50, 58. 58, yeah. Yeah. So remove this is what we're not suggesting. I don't have a problem moving. Yeah. yeah. Because I, if I just thinking of approved, uh, I don't know whether the, it is going for a license, approved license or OSI or something. <laughs> So it was yes. not uh, but OSI approved licenses is what we're what you're yes. recommending, right? Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah I put I mean, stuff like that in there just so you know because the our search isn't that great. <laughs> I, I, I will note that you know the OSI might might accept other licenses, but that is not what you mean here. You mean is this on the list of OSI approved licenses? Right. And if it's not, that doesn't mean the OSI might not approve it in the future. It just means it's not on the list of ones that are approved. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, and we only need the risk ones, right? Or yeah, wait, wait. But, okay, yeah, the grid, risk is oh, our only responsibility here. Okay, but we're not doing 73, 74, or we are? Um, we yeah, we are. Did take a cut at those, there. yeah. Okay, so 73. I already shoved in some words in there, but feel free to okay. add, Oops. reject. Code dependencies. Dependent, dependency. I might add upstream. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to type that in. Upstream, I would say reuse and yep. reused software. Yeah. I'm going to add I don't why. why. I just always think of packages because that's typically how these things are being consumed. Yeah, package okay, managers, packages, but... sure. Yeah. I might use the non plural version of it most of the time. Yeah, okay. Um, Hopefully, the keyword searcher can do, do stemming. Hopefully, I have no idea. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to work that great so far. So, um, uh, so maybe it's that the keywords are too delicate. <clears throat> how about that? Problem solved. Yeah, there we go. I mean, the way that it works right now is you just start to see things as you type. So, um, I'm also assuming there's no limit on how we could put in here. To my knowledge, there is not. All right, I've okay. added obsolete for glib years. All right, that looks good. I think uh, I think we can count that task completed. All right. Yep. Now, you know what? This, however, suggests to me, we've been working very, very hard on very carefully defining certain things. Yeah. May I? Now I'm working with the Open SSF, so maybe I'm a little biased here. But um, uh, it seems to me that there are metrics created by the Open SSF that the Chaos folks can just reuse and declare victory on, uh, namely scorecards at the build right. level. In which <laughs> case, let's let's uh, now salsa. I mean, salsa. I totally understand. It was at zero point one. We're in fact, I was just I, I just came from an interview. Uh, talking about the re release of 1.0 um, recently, but it's released, so you know we can use it. And I would What's say use it meaning that it would be either like in compliance with the salsa framework or not as sort of a well, yes no metric. Well, no, no. More in terms of um, currently, okay. The way <coughs> salsa now works is they have what they call tiers. Okay, uh, they have okay. They have various levels. And various groupings within the uh, various groupings and various levels within the groupings. Okay, the salsa build. Here, I can pull up the term. Uh, uh, let me Maybe do you want to share your screen there? Put a link in. Uh, sure. What could possibly go wrong? Um, I can't imagine. Just you know, pop up Hi, text Alicia. messages. All right, hold up. Uh, whoops. Okay. Yes, I will share my screen. I'm going to do the zoom, share screen, push the button, share. Okay. So here's what I would propose. These are things that already exist that chaos could simply say, Hey, yeah, we can use these things. Um, okay. Now we, we, all right. I don't know why things got there, but okay. This is salsa.dev and this is basically announcing the big new release salsa 1.0. Okay. Which was pretty recent. And what is the salsa? Big... I've never heard of it. Never That's heard right. of it. Oh man. Okay. Salsa stands for supply chain levels for software artifacts. Okay. Okay. And, and this is open source. Yes. Right. Well, I mean, it's a spec, so but it's it's open data. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Um so basically um so, so this it's like is SPDX a... in that way. It's it's like right uh, right like SPDX. It's a spec. You determine whether you're compliance, but in fact, it's a spec for processes. Um, I'll show you in a second what it's about. But basically, okay. the main thing that uh, it's about is in 1.0 they split. Originally, it had a whole bunch of requirements and a whole bunch of different categories. You know what? We're having trouble getting agreement. We we, we want to define these clearly. It's hard to do it all at once. So mm -hmm. they defined tracks. Okay. Yep. 
And I'm I and what's for in 1.0 is build tracks one through three, okay. And let me see if I go down. You know, let me just go down to this. I think this is a quick way of explaining it in one chart, okay. So the build salsa build track has three levels besides level zero, which is we you know, okay. For build one, you have to meet the little check marks. And these are basically requirements on your build process and platform. You know, basically the build platform has to have certain characteristics. You have to follow a consistent build process and to have to tell people, how are you building this? Which is what they're, they're what, uh, which is what Providence is. Uh, at L1, there has to exist basic information about, you know, the pro how you generate. Mm -hmm. At level two, we add the ability to say, hey, there is evidence that it's authentic, that the way you said it was built is the way it was actually built, and that you're hosting it in somewhere not under your desk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not under your, okay. Uh, oh. in, in all seriousness, there's a lot of projects which build under somebody's desk. And if that person dies, we can't build the software anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> okay. Yes. And at level three, what's edges is ways to make that unforgeable and isolated now the isolation is not full network isolation that's something called hermetic builds which turn out to be harder than you might think uh but the idea here is that one build shouldn't be influencing another build if you rebuild something it shouldn't be quietly and silently uh you know subverted because of some other build somewhere else okay and mm -hmm. so that's so really it's just three levels it's one two three okay but yeah. that said, this is an attempt, and the idea, and if you want, we, there's much more description about, you know, what are, what are the threats they're worrying about? Why are these counter, what threats do these counter versus what they don't, I, okay? And the, the idea here is if you're, you know, if you're downloading the software straight as source code, then you don't care. But if you are, like most people, you're downloading a pre-built package and using the pre-built package, You'd like to have some confidence that the pre-built package was built in a in a secure way. So that's what this is. Okay. So it's how is it other than pieces of software that would implement these checks? Basically, a build process would be implementing this. Typically, a project itself would do it if you're on like NPM or PyPI. Okay. Uh, but if you're a separate, if you, you know, build, there are separate builders, particularly system packages are often built that way. Mm -hmm. And that's fine too. You know, it's basically whoever is building the software is trying to implement this in a way that, you know, increases the likelihood that what the package that you're using is what was generated from the source. So is this something that if one, like we build Augur, for example, using GitHub webhooks, um, Right, and that, that, that would be an obvious way to do it. Right, you don't have to use GitHub yeah. Actions, but you, but a lot of folks do. Yeah, it's just it means it's not under my desk. <laughs> right, which, which is a huge win. Which, which you know, you know what? Um, I don't want to say that it's always bad to develop under your desk, but no, the, the problem not, is long term. No, so, you, it, there should be a build process independent of an individual somewhere. I right. agree. Like that's uh, basic. So, yeah, you'd be surprised how many people don't do that. <laughs> uh, things I don't want to know today. <laughs> is it tied to publicly available? Like uh, even the GitHub, you can keep the build as a private. Well, um, the assumption with this is that you're going to distribute, you know, how basically how did I build this thing? Okay. okay. Um, so I, I mean, I won't say that it's required to use the open source software, um, but it's much more focused on the, uh, now I don't know if it requires public come, come to think of it. Let's go back to that. Cause I think it says distribute provenance. It doesn't say, um, yeah, you're right. Actually come to think of it. I, I've been only thinking about it in terms of, um, open source components, but all it says is distribute provenance. I actually right. don't know how far it, 
Yeah, it has. Okay, there we go. There's your out. If you're a consumer of the artifact, you have to be able to get it. Okay. It doesn't say that it's just out to the public. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, come to th originally, this was developed uh, from what Google does internally. Uh, Google does a whole bunch of stuff when they build things. Sure. And they came up with a version, what we called 0 0.1. And then people beat it up and basically... Basically, the, the, the good thing is that people actually were doing this. That is always a big plus. There's so many specs that no one's actually tried. The mm -hmm. big negative is that it turns out not everyone's Google. <laughs> <laughs> and some things oh. that Google finds easy to do are really hard for other organizations to do. Or there are other not, ways not, to do You know what, David, this is only because my stimulus checks are too small. I could be ah. Google. <laughs> With a bigger stimulus check. Okay. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm not try, trying to cast shade on Google at all. No, I'm not. It's just. Oh, I, I think the shade is worthy, David, as someone who works here. <laughs> I'm, I'm just written, being recorded. I'm, okay. I, obviously, I. Anyways, we're a big company. I need to change like, how I say this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, my, truly, truly, and, my and goal Google is not to cast shade because everybody. Yeah, everybody, by the way, can be described that way. No matter what you do, you're going to make it work within your organization. And whenever a spec comes out that was developed by you know, from real world experience, first of all, that's the way you want to do it. But there's always the challenge of, wait, what is really focused on that one organization versus what's more general? And so it's been over a year working out how to generalize it. Um, and, and it's, and, you know, I think any good spec process, that's how, that's how it has to happen. And it's good. So and it's a good, it's a good process to follow. So anyway, um, yeah. So I think this is, it would be a worthy thing to add. There it yeah. is. And I mean, the yeah. scorecards well, would be another one. Sorry. And so if we add, like, would we add salsa as a metric or does it? I, I would say, I would say specifically the salsa build tier, build levels. Okay. Yeah, and and then you would your ranking is one of those levels. I, I like well, that. Right now, the only thing in salsa is these is the build levels, but they have already said they plan to do that. We do have drafts of that material, so I think that for for chaos's own sake, it would be wise to say, okay, this is the measure that is solid. We'll use that. The other measures, they're working on it. You know, you don't have to work on it. They're working on it, but you don't want to, you know, you can, you can decide whether or not they make sense once you've had a chance to evaluate those. Now, I, the challenge will be measuring this. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm looking at the spreadsheet too, and I'm trying to figure out um... Salsa build levels, would that go under transparency or? I, I think it'll go sure. to this. It'll go to the same place where we have SPOM or SPDX. So like, uh, it is, is it, this is more on the process, but uh, this section is more on the licensing. Yeah, yeah, salsa is not really about licensing. Licensing, but... right? But it is similar to all these three, but little different context. Well, I think maybe that means we need a section on process, not to create a whole new one, but so, it just seemed I like think, it doesn't quite fit. I think it also goes to the transparency because it's a, you are being transparent on the process of uh, this. So it might go to the section five transparency. Mm -hmm. oh, it, it really is focused on security and that's where it is, I yeah. proposed it. So and where we do it, that's, we just do it there. It's also build well, yeah, security is a big enough bucket that that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the build level stuff is specifically to counter various attacks that people are performing. So. I think it's it's totally worthwhile within that. But, you, but we don't have to make this decision today, but um, you know, hey, wait a minute. 
got the best practices badge. We could add scorecards and salsa build levels. Uh, scorecards is easy. There's a tool. There's a metric. Salsa build levels. It's that's much more of a the project does work to implement them, and then produces information that says, "Hey, I've got this build level." So it's a very different kind of measurement. I mean, probably scorecards is the first one I would add, but. But I think everybody has heard of, heard of scorecards, or maybe not. I think I think it's pretty widely yeah. known. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I, okay. I'm, I'm basically I don't. I think we've looked at the spreadsheet before, but now I'm looking and going, oh wait, <laughs> there are things missing. So, here. I was going to say like, uh, let's make these and let's make these priorities that we built on. I just changed scorecards and salsa build level to in progress. Okay, that um, sounds that sounds awesome. Okay, I added some stuff to line 60, and is that the last? No, uh, 73 and 74. Um, we're like okay. two minutes out of From time, then, right? Yeah. yeah, and I have to run to my class, so thank you for noticing. Can I, can I float something in two minutes that's somewhat yes. time sensitive? Yep, go for it. <laughs> uh, mostly because I try to figure out if I want to submit a CFP for OSSEU. I know we're about to hit North America, but of course the CFP for the next one's already due. Um, when is it due? May 2nd. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if y'all were planning to go, but I was thinking about suggesting a risk metrics panel um, that I don't know if would it be appropriate. I know OpenSSF has had their own days that might be distinct. So I don't know, I wouldn't want to conflict or maybe we would pitch it as part of that. Um, Debbie, you might have a better sense of, I don't know if they had their, an open CFP last time for, for that event. So, but I thought it might be nice just to, instead of presenting on it, maybe having a discussion on it in that setting. Yeah, I concur. I think that would be a great idea. Are folks planning to attend that if they can go? Uh, I'll yeah. be honest, I'm not sure yet myself. Okay. I probably will be there, but it, okay. you know, there's certain things it depends on. Yeah. It, it's so a like long we long probably long. won't have. My guess is we won't have a chaos count there, but that we'll have one at five. No. Would people generally be open to it? I mean, I can always yeah, try to. I'm 100, I'm 100 percent open to it. I think if you know, you could propose. I mean, I'm happy to be proposed. Like you could propose a panel that includes people. Okay. In this group. I mean, I can propose a talk if we're not really sure if folks are going to be there. I just think I'd rather do a panel versus a talk on this topic just because it's so context driven. When people mm -hmm. define risk in their own ways, or we could talk about risk in general, like yeah. we do here. But I think I also find it valuable when we get people from specific areas that are more worried about other yeah. things. And I think that's always a fun discussion. I'm 100% on board, and I would be happy to be on a panel if there's a panel proposed. And I'll I follow up in Slack. Okay. Oh, I just didn't want to like ambush people and say, hey, I signed you up for something. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> All right. I have to run because I do have to get to my classroom. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care.